So this was Holy Cross Hospital back then. February 9th, 1954. The best guy in the whole world stuck his butt out first <laughs> and made his debut into the world. about nine and a half pounds. Mom first breach. She kept calling for her mom, who, because she was Danish, and in Danish, more is mom. And she was calling for her mom. She kept saying more, more, and they kept giving her more of the gas, whatever it was. His mom couldn't walk for about three weeks after that. So because he was, and had been in this breach position, when she would lay down to change his diapers, his legs would just pop up. <laughs> According to his mom, he was a really good baby and he slept all the time and he, he really does know how to sleep still. 1500 East, Dad should recognize it. All right, behind that fence. Oh, dumb. 1476. <clears throat> so this is where so dad lived here until he was, I think, in fourth grade. The only story I remember here is when he um, had his tonsils out and he couldn't go out and play. And at Christmas time, they used to have a big bonfire of all the Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't go because he was stuck at home with his, recovering from his tonsillectomy. But he remembers with sitting and looking out the window at all the kids with the bonfire and his mom brought him some mashed potatoes to eat. And he remembers that, which is pretty good for him <laughs> to have that memory. Yeah. Woodside Drive. Okay, so this is the place Allie remembers coming. Um, 1951 Woodside Drive. It's funny how different it seems. It's been a while since we've been here. Um, I haven't really done too much to it. So, it looks the same. Yeah. I do remember when we just driven back to North Carolina. Five days, whatever. We came here. And the lake was here. All dressed up in his 80s neon colors. Yeah. <laughs> Shorts. And he brought over some rollerblades. He was teaching everybody to rollerblade. That was the new hot thing? Yeah. I just remember seeing Blake all in his neon colors going down the street on his rollerblades. Happy birthday, Bob. Pretty old, 70, is it? Yeah, he's getting up there. So uh, we're asked to provide a memory and we, we have been thinking and thinking and can't find, remember one. So I'm gonna go way back to where, before any of you guys even, Addie says happy birthday to, to where you guys didn't even know him. So I remember Bob was four years ahead of me in school. So we were never in high school at the same time. But I remember somebody telling me who was in high school, probably a girl in my ward, that Bob always walked around and like was in assemblies and stuff with this black cowboy hat on. And she seemed to think it was cool. I don't know. Well, it sounds kind of dorky to me. You you decide. <laughs> <laughs> but we think you're cool now, Bob, and we hope you have a fabulous day. <laughs> oh boy, that, that brings out memories. Bob falling off horses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have a good one. Bye. Bob, you're 70. I'm not sure how that happened particularly since I'm nowhere near that old myself, and I always thought I was your older brother. I don't know how it works. Maybe Stephen Hawking can explain it, but I can't. In any event, your wife has asked me to put together a little uh, a little video just relating some, some favorite memory I have of you, an amusing memory of you growing up. And of course, the first one that comes to mind is the one that happened, that incident that happened in the, the summer between your, your ninth and 10th grades with your, and with your best friend, uh, Tom Hess. The one, you know, the one that involved two mallard ducks, a long-handled broom, a goat, and oh yeah, a motorcycle cop. But you know, I figured that's the kind of story that you ought to tell yourself because you know it best. So I'll let you, I'll leave that one up to you. 
But in thinking about things that go back a long time when we were kids, that is a long time ago. I remember the summer, summers we spent on 4230 South, where we spent most of the summer playing baseball in the street. We weren't really playing baseball. We were mostly, you know, hitting a, hitting a ball with, with a bat and seeing who could catch the ball and who could throw it the furthest. You know, that kind of stuff. But I remember you probably were, oh, I don't know, seven or eight years old. Maybe a little older. No, about, probably about seven or eight years old. And your favorite thing to do when, um, when you get excited or when you get happy was to run around in circles with your hands over your head, shaking your hands. It, it looks something like this. Well, as a kid, I thought that was kind of an odd behavior, but I haven't thought about it much until a year ago or so, and I was reading, and I, I, I saw a, 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 an image of that, and it turns out that that kind of behavior is indicative of early onset dementia. So I guess that explains a lot of things. Anyway, you can now cross dying off young off your list of things you want to, to worry about. Happy birthday, Bob. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Hey, Bob, we, we love, love you. Hey, Bob, understand that you're having a big birthday coming up. So we want to wish you a happy birthday. Very happy birthday, Bob. From over here in Blighty. Have a great day. Have one. See ya. Bye. So this house right here, that's Dave's house. I don't know much about this house other than it's where Dave Meacham lived, who was dad's one of his very best friends and he's still friends with today. I do remember meeting his mother. Who she knitted us, or crocheted us, a really pretty afghan when Travis was born. I think it was a pink and blue and white afghan. It was really pretty. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Meacham, one of Bob's good friends. I'm uh, gonna take you on a little stroll down memory lane here for a bit. So uh, come on along with me. I've been thinking lately um, about the subject of famous duos. You know, uh, those relatively rare occurrences when Two individuals seem to become their very best when they work together closely um, as friends and collaborators. As time goes by, it seems that we can't think of one without the other. You know, like John Lennon and Paul McCartney, or Paul Simon and Dark Garfunkel, Frodo Baggins and Sam Gamgee, and of course, Dave Meacham and Robert Michael Sorensen. That famous duo got their start right here at Crestview Elementary School, fourth grade. In fact, I'm standing right here in the middle of the old dodgeball court right now. I think it was 1964, as I recall, about mid-year, Bob was the new kid that showed up at our school. And there was something definitely different about this new kid, especially the way he dressed. He wore these skin-tight, Beatlesque, Fab Four-type jeans all the girls swooned. Oh, the new boy is so cute. And I was uh, thinking, oh, please. I don't think I'm gonna like this guy. I 
was wrong. I found out right away that uh, um, Bob and his family had moved into a house just three way, three houses away from mine, and uh, in no time at all, we were best of friends. Fast forward a few years to Olympus Junior High School. The uh, decrepit old building that we spent three years in is gone now. Replaced by this sparkling new edifice. It was a mile and a half walk for us from home to here. So three miles, three mile hike each day for Bob and me and our other friend, Tom Hess. Three miles a day, five days a week, nine months a year, three years. That's a lot of time for three kids in their early teens to be spent spending together. Three, three young guys who are just trying to figure out what the wide world was all about. Man, the three of us talked and talked and laughed our heads off during those long walks. We didn't know it at the time, but we were living some of the best days of our lives here. From September to mid-November, we'd walk home from here and then turn right around, jump on our bikes, and with our football helmets banging around on our handlebars, we'd ride all the way back out here to Little League football practice. Man, did that get old. You gotta have Bob tell you the story about, uh, you know, speaking of Little League football practice, the story of the plan that he and I hatched one night before practice to um, a plan that would make the hated tackling drill much less traumatic for us. It was a bad idea if we paid for it. Well, who we are at Olympus High. I'd like to say that Bob and I did some of our best work here. That we were really cool and really popular, especially with the girls. Or if not that, distinguished <laughs> sterling scholars showing the promise of great things to come. But uh, no, that that wasn't that wasn't the case. We did okay here though. Average, pretty much. Mediocre, we were a little better than that. We did all right. Still best of friends. A resounding yes. Simon and Garfunkel were at the top of the music charts back when Bob and I were here, and we both enjoyed their music immensely, especially the, the many thoughtful lyrics. Um, a verse from one of the, their old songs that we listened to long ago is caught up with us now after all these years. We were 16 when our Garfunkel sang. What did he sing? Uh, <laughs> can you imagine us years from today sharing a park bench quietly? How terribly strange to be 70. Old friends. Well, Bob. We made it, we're 70, and we're still best of friends. How cool is that? Happy 70th, Robert Michael. I wish you and your family all the best, and I'll see you soon at the first tee. Yeah, but we did go to his 50-year reunion a couple of years ago, 
and one third of his class has passed away. So we are feeling like survivors. I think when he hung out with Dave and that crew, he was the designated driver. Hmm. But then he had his other friend, Steve, who was on a different end of the spectrum. But he's still, Dave and Steve and him are all still good friends today. They go golfing. So yeah. Robert, I'm taking this video with Mount Olympus as a backdrop, mainly because some of my fondest memories of our long 50 plus year association occurred in the mountains, specifically the times we'd go up to Albion Basin uh, with a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken and eat the whole thing together as we sat by a fire. Um, We've done a lot of things together over the years, Bob. Uh, some fun trips, uh, not the least of which was the time we spent with you guys in England. And lots of golfing and, and sharing of theater tickets in the Piner Memorial Theater. But uh, we're getting along in years now. You're the first one to hit 70, so you're the senior uh, along here. I, only chronologically, emotionally, you're still a junior but I uh, wanted to wish you a very happy 70th birthday and uh, here's to uh, a few more birthdays yet to come. Happy birthday, Bob. Bob, want to wish you a very merry and a happy 70th birthday. Just wanted to express my great love and appreciation for you, period. There are many, many, many times as we're visiting about the church and about life that I become amazed at how wise you are, how much you know, and how much common sense is a part of you. It is always a privilege to be with you. And sometimes at the end, maybe we haven't caught a lot of fish, but we've grown spiritually and we've grown in many ways as we talk about life, about our families. And the thing that this family needs to know about you that you love the, your wife and your children and that that concept dominates most of all of the things that we do. So as I wish you a happy birthday, I'm also declaring to them of your goodness, of your love to them for all they mean to you and your eternal desire to be together as a family forever and ever. I am impressed always, Bob, of your graciousness and your goodness and your lack of judgment about one being good or bad, but look at each individual as a child of God, one that can bless lives if we look at them and learn from them. There's a great deal I could say about you, Bob, but you know how I feel and I am very grateful that we get to go fishing together and do things together because I'm a better man because of you. And I thank you for that. And I thank you family uh, and you Jane for what you have done to make this man so great. And just again, witness to you of his love for you and his goodness and his greatness. And say, thank you, Bob. May we continue to have many hours together learning and growing and developing in the eyes of our Father in Heaven as we build one another and help one another. Hope you have a great experience on this, your birthday. Thank you, Bob. Um, so we're gonna drive by <clears throat> the old Beneficial Life building. After my brief stint at BYU, I decided to take a break until I came home for Christmas and my a uh, woman in our ward who was our young women president and she said well they're higher at beneficial life if you want to come in and apply and so i went and applied at beneficial life insurance company um and i got the job in january 1975. in march of 1975 bob dad gets off his mission and then he needs a job while well, he's going to the U part-time so he starts working a beneficial life he worked in the microfilm department and for my job, I would need to go access some of those old records. And so he would watch me. He thought I had a really cute bum. <laughs> then rumor had it, 
that he was going to ask me out. Well, months went by. And eventually, he quit and got a job at Zions Bank. On them. And I remember I would go cash my paychecks there. And I remember seeing him sitting there in this blue and white gingham shirt. And I thought, yeah, he's kind of cute. Eventually, he came up to my desk with Steve, his buddy Steve, because he didn't dare do it alone. And he came up and he said, we came to ask you out. And I went, both of you? <laughs> and he's like, no, just me. This is the McEwen mansion. This is where we came on our very first date. His friend, Joe Black, got married and we came to their reception on our very first date, which was probably November, early November. Let's say early. <laughs> we better say early. November, December. Oh, well, that's where we came to his wedding reception. And then after that, we went with Steve and Peggy to a really, really nice restaurant called Balsam Embers. sidewalks in 44, how old's Travis? 44 years. So our apartment, our very first little home, is this one on the top that faces the street with the vertical blinds in it. And it, we were so excited to move into this little house, which is our first little home. I remember Bob taking the bus home sometimes. We'd get off the bus here and walk down and I'd be waiting in the window, <laughs> watching him walk home. And we lived here for less than a year, I think, because I got pregnant and we were going to need two bedrooms. One day after work, we got all our belongings and walked around the corner with our stuff. After school, after work, yeah. Um, Bob's friend, Steve, came over and helped lift the heavy stuff around the corner. But mostly we just carried everything around the corner and one night after work, it was called the Sheldon Apartments. Even when we, we lived there, 768 6th Avenue, we lived in this bottom on the right. Should we walk over and just look real quick? No. Really quick. Because I've never been. I just want to pick. <laughs> to being Snoopy. Little Snoop. Papa Bob, happy birthday. We were supposed to do this with my whole family, but uh, Saturday came and went, and I'm on my way to uh, beautiful Reno, Nevada. As you can see, it's looking a little sketchy. I'm driving into a snowstorm right now, but we'll make it. Anyways, happy birthday. I think you're ripe old age of 70 now. Uh, so go get him, Bob. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Papa Bob. Happy birthday. We love you. Happy birthday, Papa Bob. I love you. Happy birthday, Papa Bob. Hope you have a good day. We love you. Happy 70th birthday, Papa Bob. Welcome to the University of Utah. This is where Bob attended undergraduate and got his degree in psychology because it was the quickest way out. We were, when Bob was going to the U, that's when we lived on the avenues. And I mostly stayed home. Well, I worked, well, I worked until Marcus was born. And then we were just dirt poor. So he worked part-time and um, it actually, he, I, he took some time off to work at the phone company for a little bit, full-time, probably trying to get on our feet after Marcus was born. He didn't get in medical school. And so that's when he wanted to hurry up and graduate, get a degree, and go do something different. And that's when he decided to go to BYU and um, get a master's degree in organizational behavior. All 
All right, Papa Bob, happy 70th birthday. We're uh, all grateful for everything you do. And uh, me and Nicole, especially after going on that cruise with you, we feel that we know you and your bowel movements intimately, as well as your <laughs> urination frequency. So we're very grateful for that. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, Papa Bob. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, and I will just share one thing that I love about you, Papa Bob, is that um, when we come to your house on Sundays and have Sunday dinner, I love that you make it a priority to have family prayer with everyone. That really means a lot to me, and it's you're such an example to my kids um, to show them the importance of taking the time to kneel and pray and, and you know, be the priesthood holder of your home. And I, I really appreciate that about you. So happy birthday, hope you have a great 70th. And we love you. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Okay. From there, we moved to California, 1981. And 1982 hit, it was a bad recession. Dad lost his job. We decided we could be unemployed in Utah as easy as California. We preferred Utah. So that's when we moved back here. Um, and then Dad started looking for work. Summer of 1982. So I, this is when I went back to work for Beneficial Life. And Dad put the boys in daycare. And Dad was out beating the pavement every day looking for a job. It was kind of our not our best year, shall we say. <laughs> it was a hard year. Happy birthday, Bob. Happy birthday, Bob. We wanted to tell you that we really appreciate you and we love our Ask Bobs. <laughs> That's our favorite thing, is to ask Bob something that we could look up on the internet ourselves. But we want you to do the research and like, then we discuss it. How many rings does Saturn have, Bob? How many rings does Saturn have, Bob? And... Why are saltines so delicious? Okay. And look at the beautiful scenery behind us. Yep. I've got my finger monitor. And I love you, Daddy. Mm hmm. Love you, Bob. Marcus and Travis will remember because they were here. After graduation, when we came out to take some pictures, it was all gonna be real nice and cute little pictures and everything. Well, Marcus picks up a pine cone or something, tosses it about 100 feet and manages to hit his brother right in the eye. When Travis is screaming bloody murder, while all the other families were standing around in their caps and gowns and taking pictures, we were trying to get out of here as fast as possible. This is the house that dad was in most of medical school, he oh. lived, we lived here. So this is the house that I did most of the parenting on by myself. <laughs> this is the house that I lived in when I went back to work and while dad was going to school. Take boys to daycare, go to work, come home. Um, and then Brooke was born in 1986. Wow. So Brooke came home to this house. Wow. Brooke came home to this house, yeah. I didn't work until dad graduated and he was uh, doing his internship up at LDS Hospital. Penny, quiet. And it wasn't quite enough to live on, so I went back to work for a few months and my mom came over and attended no, no, work. No, no, and then we moved to North Carolina and then no. I didn't work anymore after that.
sing. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Papa Bob. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Go first. Okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. Papa Bob, Dad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just want to let you know how much we love you and, uh, just thinking about what I want to tell you is just how much I appreciated my life, how steady you've always been. And, um, you've always been very patient and calm and someone who I know I can turn to no matter what stupid thing I do or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I, trouble I get myself into that you'll always be there to not make it worse <laughs> to help me learn from it and move on and and yeah I appreciate that that I've always felt like I can tell you my mistakes and go to you and to mom and um, to be able to yeah just have that soft landing mm -hmm. when I know I'm an idiot <laughs> yeah. honestly the same like <laughs> yeah because Bob you've helped us like so much more then you know him in many ways um and also just it's always someone's like fear about what one's relationships with their in-laws will be and that has never had to be something like i felt so accepted by you and um encouraged and, and it just feels so good to have a father-in-law like you so we love you very much happy birthday happy birthday bob you old man this is the house that mommy lived in when we moved back to North Carolina in 1990, 1990, this was a really great neighborhood. It was a perfect neighborhood for my little boys to ride their bikes around, Marcus and Travis, because it was safe. Um, it was brand new when we moved in. Went through an ordeal because the builder was a piece of crap, like really bad. And when we opened the front door, the door bumped into the stair and I had to go to the building inspector and do all kinds of things to get the builder to fix the stairs. I think that house right there still has the door hitting the stairs. But anyway, that was our beginnings to living in this house. But once we got in, we loved it here. And we moved here in 1992 from West Bountiful. Um, after dad was finally no, done with residency. And so this was our house that we were gonna stay in for a long time. So how did it feel when you got into this house? <sighs> it's right by It felt now. right. We were um, gonna build a house. We had a lot over, a few streets over. And, we, and then we decided, we were just driving up the street one day and it was for sale, it was brand new. Um, Chad next door had built it. And we walked in and it, it wasn't my dream home, honestly but it just felt home, felt like home. And this street was the best street ever. Everyone on this street is amazing. So big compared to anything we'd ever lived in. You all had your own room. We fixed them up really cute. And, but you were used to sharing a room with Brooke. And so even though your room was adorable, we, you, you got mad at me for making you sleep in your scary room. Yeah, it took you a while to get used to it, but. We all settled in and had a lot of, had a lot of memories in that house in this neighborhood. It's a great place to live.